Hello, I'm Andres Martinez, Vice President here at New America. I'm with my good friend Tamar Jacoby, a Schwartz Fellow at New America, as well as the President of Immigration Works. We are sitting here in early 2006. There's excitement about immigration reform. Oh, no, no, wait, it's actually 2013, but it feels very much like 2006. I can remember being in Los Angeles at the LA Times, big marches on the streets of LA. We were going to do comprehensive reform. We had a Republican president who was backing this. Uh, a lot of the same senators that I saw go to that microphone this week were, were the, the gang pushing immigration reform back then. I, I feel like I've seen this movie. Is it going to end differently tomorrow? You have seen this movie, but the movie has changed somewhat. You're right, in 06 and 07, there was bipartisan support. You're right that, that similar characters, you're right, similar outline of proposal. What's different is there's been six years of drought in between, and that's really important to notice, right? There were six and years. And a few elections. There were, and, well, I'm going to get to the few elections, but yes, six years in drought and, and a few elections. The six years of drought, you couldn't even mention immigration on Capitol Hill. You mentioned, when I walked through the hall and people associated me with immigration, literally people would go the other way or people would not return my phone calls. I should say you were very involved with that. I was effort. very involved in the 06 and 07 effort. Um, then um, the, the, the 2012 election happened and the Latino vote uh, made its muscle apparent, um, played a key role in electing President Obama. Republic, this is not a, this was not a sudden thing. This is a, a power that's been growing for many years, many decades even, and, and is only in the middle of its growth, will grow significantly going forward. But for some reason, this was the moment in that kind of steady crescendo when people noticed and people got it and the penny dropped and Democrats and Republicans realized this is the future. And that has just changed the climate um, unrecognizably from as little as six months ago. And I would argue it's changed the climate from five or six years ago also, because more Republicans get it now, and I think there's an urgency on both sides. I, I really, I've been quite astonished in recent weeks how much right. momentum I think there is. And it's not to say momentum to get it right. It's a, it's, a long, <laughs> it's a long road ahead to get the details right, and the details really matter, the substance, let's not call them the details. Um, but I think there is a lot of momentum, and I think it's, it's quite unusual. Well, let's talk a little bit about the substance. Uh, and the urgency. Let me, let me just say one yeah. thing before we get to that, because, you know, the Latino vote is what's driving this. I hope we don't just do this as a way to keep a, a Latino unhappy segment of the population happy. This really has to be done in a way that's good for America. And I'm not saying what's good for America is necessarily different than what's good for the Latino vote, but I hope members don't approach it as, let's check that box, right. keep those people happy, move on to the next right. thing. This is really about all of America. This is about who we're going to be for decades going future. This is going to be how every business in America hires people. Um, this cannot be done as a check the box for that protest group. Well, and we certainly don't want, more seriously than And that. we certainly don't want to be, be here again in 20 years, which no, is what don't. happened the last time. And I think this is a little bit what you're getting at. Um, for all of the political urgency around the question of immigration reform, a very important component of it is not getting much attention, as you wrote about this week on CNN. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so when most people hear about comprehensive immigration reform, they think about the 11 million unauthorized people already here. That's who Latinos were voting about. That's the controversy. That's the path to citizenship, the quote-unquote amnesty, the what is it about illegal you don't understand. When you hear all those phrases, that's what they're arguing about. Right. Those people are really here because of a failing in the past. Exactly. They are here because people wanted to come to work. We needed people to come to work here. We had job openings that weren't being filled, um, and, and, but there was no legal way for people to get here. So there's a legal way. We, th it's a little more complicated than that because we need workers. We need very skilled workers, right. and we need very unskilled workers. We don't graduate enough science PhDs, and we graduate so many high school diploma right. holders that there are not enough people left to do the the farm work and the and the kitchen work. And there aren't enough and legal there, there aren't venues enough ven for unskilled workers. Exactly. There are enough legal Permanent. avenues or right. paths in for for. There's really no legal avenue or path. Critics say they skipped a line, but there is no a, line. You, as you pointed out, there is no line. There is no line. And, and yet we, there's a need for these And workers. if we don't fix that, if we don't create a line, we're going to find ourselves in exactly, exactly the same place 10 or 20 years down but the road. But why, why is it so difficult to talk about this? I mean, even, even President Obama's pep rally yesterday in Las Vegas, and one of my personal pet peeves is that we always have to advance policy in campaign-style pep rallies. I wish we could get over that. But anyways, even in his talk in Las Vegas, uh, he was spent an awful lot of time talking about 
the founders of Google, you know, God bless them, and the venture capitalists. And that's a very important part. If we don't want to stifle innovation by not, ha by not being a beacon to all kind of, you know, the STEM graduates and, and engineers around the world. But even in that context, when the core of the problem is unskilled labor, he feels like he needs to lean on, you know, the founders of Intel and Google. There's why an why is that? Unholy alliance of labor-friendly Democrats and anti-immigrant Republicans that don't like the idea of more visas for workers. And Americans generally don't understand, they are skeptical of having right. more immigrants. What they don't necessarily under understand is that what we're proposing is not more unskilled immigrants, it's that the ones who've been coming illegally could illegal. now come right. legally. Right. We're switching them from the back door, so to speak, to a front door. But people hear more visas and they say it's 8% unemployment. And even the employers who rely on immigrant workers, they've never had a program in the past. Right. So they don't necessarily see, oh, I'm going to need a program in the future. They don't realize that the old way of doing things, and most of them didn't deliberately hire unauthorized workers, right? They looked at those papers and they ran them through the system. But, you know, many of them were worried. They couldn't ask any more questions. Right. Um, they think that somehow that's going to go on. They don't realize that they're going to need a program. They don't like the idea of a bureaucratic government program. They kind of hope they'll figure out a way to get by, and they're not really thinking to the future. So there's a big constituency for legalization, all the Latino voters for that. There's a big constituency for the Google and Intel and high-skilled piece. There's a big constituency for enforcement of every kind. Right. But the thing that's the most important heart of the fix, there's not a real strong constituency for. And that is, that's, that's a challenge. I was very struck by how the Republicans, uh, I first noticed this in Senator Rubio's op-ed last weekend in, in the Las Vegas Review Journal, where he talked about uh, the status quo amounts to de facto amnesty. And that seems to be this great talking point that all the Republicans now yes. are, are relying on to uh, justify their 180, that not doing something is the soft position yeah. because essentially these people are here, and so reform now is tough. And this seems like something yeah. Frank Luntz might have come up <laughs> for them, well, or, or maybe Ru you Rubio's, did, I don't know. Rubio's but, smart enough to come up with it himself. But, I I've, but I've heard a couple of Republicans yeah. now saying that, and, and it's, it's, but it's, it, it's, it's an astonishing turnaround. Yeah. It is an astonishing It's a very turnaround. clever turn of phrase. Yeah. Um, but so talk a little, and, and I... And, and to be honest, McCain has been saying it for years, to be okay, honest. Okay, okay. To be honest, to give the credit where it's due. Well, he wasn't saying it in 2010 when he... Yeah, yeah that's... But anyways, the, um, I'm also struck by the fact that they, there seems to have been tremendous movement, you know, just in the last month on the question of citizenship. Yeah. And that big difference seems to, be, to have been taken off the table, as I understand it. That well, I think we're still, we haven't heard from the majority of Republicans yet. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. Within the gang. Within, right. within the okay. gang, it's taken off the table. We still have the House to go, and we still have, oh, yeah, you know, guys. a bunch of other senators. <laughs> right. And I mean, I, you're right, there's so much momentum and people who were, were, weren't talking about citizenship even weeks ago are now talking about citizenship, I would be la the last person to predict it's going to stop. You know, the, the momentum is rolling and people are, people, are, people are waking up different people than they and, went to and bed. And just, just so we're clear, when I say citizens, citizenship, I mean that the, the people who have been here uh, without authorization, not only would they be entitled legal. to get legal residency, but they, might, they, they will be eligible for citizenship, and that's always been a bit of a... Exactly. A and now we're arguing, if you, if you look at the argument between the senators who were behind the bipartisan proposal and the president, the dispute between them now is, do we have, how long will they have to wait? How many hoops and do you have to jump How many hoops do you have to jump through? And will we have to secure the border first? That's a pretty, if that's all we have to argue about, and, we're and in a pretty good place. And cure the flu and <laughs> fix the debt. And... <laughs> right. but, um, but so, but it isn't that. But it's really we... just, all it really is, is how long are they going to have to wait? And they're right. pretty similar in that. And arguably, Obama's, they'd have to wait longer. And do we have to secure the border first? I mean, it's... it's... Haven't we already secured the border? Well, you know, it's all in your definition. I mean, and I don't live on the border. Um, you know, Jeff Flake, who somebody I really trust, who represents Senator Arizona, from Arizona yeah. Senator from Arizona, um, who has been pro-immigration reform for, you know, through his career in Congress, and is very close to the, to the ranchers on the border, right. you know, he thinks, not that it's not secure, I mean, the flow is way down, but it's the, net it, zero, it's the net now, zero right? yeah. but, you know, it's, there's a dangerous situation in Mexico, and those people are on the front line. I, I, you know, I, when Jeff says, when Senator Flake says, there's still work to be done on the border, I trust him, there's probably still some work to be done on the border. I don't think we want to move the goalpost and move the goalpost and move the goalpost. That means we never do right. anything Right. The Washington else. Post, I think, had a, a, a good article pointing out this week that a lot of the metrics that were set forth in 2006, 2007 have been and accomplished. Right. 
And I think there were yeah, and that's important to, to eleven murders yeah. in El Paso last yeah, yeah. year, which yeah. is which is amazing. It's just stunning. Yeah, yeah. Considering yeah. that it's yeah, and I the think same we're city close. divided by one it, wall from Juarez. Cer- it's certainly we're certainly close. And the flow has has right has uh, down. basically although been, the flow you know, will gone, pick up. The flow will pick up as the economy. Whether it's picks a question of, of the demographics in Mexico because Mexico has an aging population, or whether it's merely a question of the slowdown in our economy. Or the security measures. I mean, we could, we could, we could. Spend we, we, hours we always parsing, but the flow that. will pick up again right. as the economy improves, and it already has. I mean, the immigrants only come to work if there is work, and if you're going to be unemployed, it's much better to be unemployed in Mexico. It's warmer, it's cheaper. You Food's have family better. and friends, exactly. <laughs> so when the downturn started, the migrants knew about the downturn before we did. The flow started to ebb in late 06, 07. and the migrants are now picking up again. Um, so I think the migrants are seeing the upturn, um, maybe ahead of some Americans. So there will be an and increased also they, flow. To be fair, when they when they see this, the politics shifting a bit. Um, yeah. You know, if you're in a, to be fair, if but you're the, in a pueblo, pueblo in Zacatecas and you hear that Obama gave this big announcement, you you might think it's uh, there's a green light. It's more about the work. It's about the yeah. work, and it's been coming up since since the beginning of the year. Well, let me ask you, just turning a little bit to the politics, um, is it more productive in your estimation in terms of passing reform to have the president work closely with the senators and try to get on the same page early on? Or is it better for him to, to stake out a position that's far to the left so that enough Republicans can oppose his proposal and still vote for. for I, if I if I was looking at this, let's if I was president, I would say, you know, I haven't seen Congress work together on anything, you know, really serious since I've been here. Um, we've got some people working seriously. We've got a lot of momentum. Just let it go for a while. Let it run. See where it goes. I mean, I don't. You know, he feels he needs to step in and add some urgency. Perhaps that could help us by that becomes the left goalpost and the right. and the and the and the bipartisan bill becomes the center. But you know, I, I think something's moving. Let's let's let it breathe for a bit. Great. Tomorrow, this is going to be really interesting to uh, follow in the next months, uh, weeks, and months and years. Hopefully, not years. Yeah, uh, not years. We're going to get this we'll done. We'll be looking to you for wisdom on this. Thanks. Thank a lot. you so much. Thanks, Thanks. for the opportunity.